Hey everybody, Sarah here. So today I'm going to be going over some Motley combinations and maybe also a brief history of Motley as well. I've talked a little bit about Motley in the past, uh, specifically Hurricane Motley, as well as comparing Motley to Stripe, but I thought I would kind of give a little bit more focus on Motley and some combinations of Motley as well. Before we jump in, please remember to like, subscribe, share, and thank you to all of the members of this channel as well. You guys have really made this feel more worthwhile for me. So if anybody out there would like to become a member, it's $2 a month. You'll get access to live videos after they are over. I do live Q&As when I'm feeding snakes. I think I'm going to be doing that once a month. I originally thought I'd be doing it once a week, but uh, the once a week thing seemed to be a little bit too much for me right now anyway. So we're starting with once a month, but I also upload a second video for members every single week. So if you would like to get some of that little extra stuff, it doesn't take away from the education on the channel, but you do get some of your extra stuff just as a way for me to say thank you for being members and for helping me with this channel. So the history of Motley is relatively straightforward. Back in 1972, Bernard Bechtel uh, purchased a Motley corn snake. Uh, it didn't really have that name in the beginning, but uh, it was purchased because of its odd pattern, and then it was bred, and a son was bred back to her and proved Motley to be a recessive mutation. Uh, but Motley is definitely one of the more interesting ones. A typical Motley is going to have a blank belly with uh, no checkers, although sometimes you will get Motleys that have what I call paradox checkers. This is a especially common in lines that have ultra and ultra mill in them. But there's also a lot of selectively bred types of motley as well. Uh, some of the more common ones are going to be hurricane, like I mentioned earlier, as well as pinstripe, but there's also one known as q-tip, which is a little less common, but does happen on occasion. Another somewhat common form of motley is known as banded motley. Now there are banded corns that are just normal corns. They are selectively bred to have the banded look, but they also have the motleys that have the banded look. So if you're ever looking for a banded corn snake, just kind of keep in mind that some of them are motley and some of them aren't. So if you're ever looking, just make sure that you know exactly what you're getting. One kind of odd and interesting thing about Motley is it's actually incredibly hard to get an Okati Motley. In fact, there are very few Motleys out there that I've ever seen that had anything that I would say looks like an Okati phase. Uh, it's not entirely clear why this is, but something about the Motley pattern kind of just doesn't, it makes it so these borders can't really exist very well uh, in the pattern of the snake. Now I have seen some Motleys that had some dark borders. I hatched out a nice gold dust Motley if years ago that has some relatively thick borders, especially for a motley. Um, but again, with that ultra being in there, uh, an ultra most likely being from hybrid origin, it's hard to say if these weird things that happen in ultra, such as the uh, paradox belly checkers and the possible sort of okati ish look in the motleys, uh, it could just be that there's some of that hybrid blood carried over that's causing these abnormalities. But we don't know for sure. Uh, however, we know a lot of people have been trying to get okati motleys for a long time and it doesn't really work that well. Motley is personally my favorite pattern mutation in corn snakes and so I'm going to uh, show you guys some photos of a bunch of different motley combination morphs so that you guys can get an idea of what motley does with all of these mutations. I'm obviously not going to show every single one that's out there because there's so many but I thought it would be interesting to sort of see the differences between the motley versions of some things versus the non-motley versions and I think that motley really makes them look better in a lot of cases especially in the case of something like like caramel, uh, where as a caramel corn snake kind of just, to me, seems very bland. Once you add that motley, I think that it's just really beautiful. So I'm just going to kind of go through photos of those and I'll be back. Okay, so I wanted to more do a voiceover of this part of the video, just so you guys can see pictures. Uh, we're going to start out with our typical motley corn snake. And as you can see, um, it's just our typical colors. We just have our normal sort of red, orange, tan, um, which is just the, nor you know, a normal colors for a corn snake. Um, they can be a little bit darker, some are a little bit lighter, but for the most part, um, they're just our typical normal colors, and the typical motley pattern is um, sort of spots down the back, or at least that's what it, it looks like. Basically, the saddles come together along the edges to form what looks like spots of the background color. 
So that's kind of something to remember is that the lighter color here is the actual background color of the snake. Okay. I'm gonna go over some sort of normal looking motley combinations. We obviously have things like amelanistic motley um, or anerythristic motley. One that I really enjoy and that I mention is the caramel motley. And I think that a typical caramel just does not look near as pretty as a caramel motley. Uh, something about motley bringing that nice golden color out. Um, I, I really enjoy that look uh, over the typical caramel. I prefer caramel motley combination. One that I think is somewhat interesting is actually cinder motley. Uh, you don't see too many cinder motleys, but uh, the ones that I have seen are very, um, very odd looking. They almost look normal patterned with like some funky motley going on with them. I think this is because cinder has on average more saddles than the um, than the normal corn snake does. And so uh, when there's more saddles that are smaller, like what you have in most cinders, then adding that motley in can actually kind of change how that looks a little bit because it just acts a little bit differently. I'm going to skip, I'm not going to be doing things in alphabetical order, I'm going to skip to the opposite, which is our sun-kissed motley. Now sun kissed usually have fewer saddles, so when combined with motley you also get this very interesting normal looking pattern. It almost looks like a cleaned up sun-kissed as uh, opposed to a motley sun kissed. I have seen a few motley sun kissed that genuinely do look like what you might consider a motley sun kissed to look like, but most motley sun kissed kind of just look like normal patterned sun kissed that um, just maybe have, like I said, a little bit more of a cleaned up pattern, but oftentimes sun-kissed motleys will even retain some belly checkers, usually not full belly checkers, uh, and sometimes they will be blank as well, but uh, you will see a lot of sun-kissed motleys have some paradox checkers when combined with motley. Now another really interesting one, of course, is tessera motley. Um, a lot of people look at tessera motley and they think it's a stripe or maybe a pinstripe motley, uh, but they, and they do look very similar to pinstripe motleys, and that's kind of what I would compare it to. Um, the biggest difference between a, a pinstripe motley and a tessera motley is usually going to be that the stripe on the tail does not often break um, above the vent on a tessera, where it almost always will, I think pretty much in every case I've ever seen, a pinstripe motley's stripe will have a break in the stripe right above the vent at the tail, and a tessera's does not usually. Now when I say that, a lot of tessera's stripes break up uh, at random anyway, so that can make it a lot harder to tell the difference between a pinstripe motley and a tessera motley if the tessera has a broken stripe that kind of breaks up along the whole body. Um, but generally speaking, we can usually tell the difference. I've also spoken a few times about ultramel motley and how some ultramel motley combinations do have those paradox checkers, and so I thought I would kind of give you guys an example here of that also. Uh, I want to move on to the sort of selectively bred types of motley. There's the, I think one of the most common, and we've mentioned it already, is the pinstripe motley. Uh, so this has where the motley spots connect all the way down the body to make it look like the snake is striped, even when it's genetically not a stripe. Um, and this kind of has a few different sort of levels to it. So there's also a thing called q-tip motley uh, which is a little less common but a q-tip motley is somewhere in between in my opinion a normal looking motley and a pinstripe motley where you have some of those um those spots that are connected with a stripe in the middle but not all of them are and um, you will progressively as you breed better and better pinstripes like if you continue to breed for those connecting stripes over the generations you will eventually get to pinstripe uh, so Q-tip, though it's not very popular um, and not very common, it is kind of a stepping stone to eventually getting to your pinstripes. Another type of motley that I mentioned is the banded motley. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into this other than banded. 
um, is also a normal type pattern and it was actually originally a normal type pattern so I don't want to go too far into it I want to save that for the sort of selectively bred normal types video but I thought I would at least mention it here because uh, you will see banded motleys occasionally another very common type of motley is obviously the hurricane motley uh, and that's probably going to be the last main one that we talk about here uh, hurricane is almost um, I've talked about hurricane a few different times uh, and I'm not gonna so I'm not gonna go into great detail about it here since I already did a whole video on just hurricane by itself but essentially a hurricane is a very nice spotted motley uh, you're not gonna get much hurricaning going on with our q-tip or the pinstripe um, so you want to make sure you have a nice spotted motley line and then there's this uh, sort of frosting that comes up in between those spots. And if you look at a frosted corn snake, you'll kind of see why um, I say that a hurricane motley is essentially a frosted motley. Uh, I'm not saying frosted as in the um, hybrid terms. Um, I don't use frosted in that way since frosted is such an uncommon hybrid. Nobody really uses that name anymore. Um, now we most often use the term frosted or frosting referring to the actual pattern or the look where the um the color in the saddles is almost sort of washed out or just did not uh, develop uh as as prominently and so when you have this frosting and you put it into a motley line uh, it makes it look like you have these hurricane spots where the spot in the center, of course, is the background color, so it's going to be lighter. But then um, right outside of that is a ring of the saddle color. Now, you don't want to confuse Hurricane Motley for something like Okatee Motley. Those are going to be different. Now, I know that the um, most common look of Hurricane Motley is Annery Hurricane Motley. So many people look at that black ring and they think that that is a saddle border, when in fact it's actually just the saddle color itself. Uh, so when you look at an Amel Hurricane Motley, that um, that area around, that ring around the background color is not going to be white like you would expect in a reverse Okatee. It's going to be orange, which is the saddle color. So just kind of keep in mind when you're talking about Hurricane that you're not talking about Okatee Motley. Um, and I'll give you, I'll put up a picture here of the girl that's the closest thing to an Okatee Motley that I've ever seen. I produced her out of a clutch a couple of years ago. And so I'm going to keep trying to breed her uh, her line into Okatee and just see what we can do. Um, I don't necessarily expect to have an Okatee Motley, but it would be really cool if that happened also. There's one other type of Motley that I forgot to mention in the original recording, and that is the Leopard Motley. Uh, this used to be called Jaguar originally, and now it is known as Leopard. And uh, it is sort of meant to look like the Stillman corn, but the Stillman look was not inheritable. Uh, and so now we have this leopard look, which is genetically motley, unlike the Stillman, uh, but kind of has this weird separation down the center with the pattern sort of being on the edges. It's hard to know for sure if this is uh, inheritable yet or how well it's inheritable, but I thought I would at least mention it in here. Another really interesting one is Terrazzo Motley. They look very much like stripes, which is very interesting, uh, so I thought I would mention those as well. There's obviously things like diffused motley, which is kind of an odd one because a lot of people can't really tell when there is diffused along with motley. Uh, a lot of people will see a diffused motley and not know that it is motley uh, or not know that it is diffused. Uh, and one thing to remember when you're looking at diffused motley is to sort of just look at that saddle shape uh, going around the spots. You can kind of see a little bit of that. Even in really, really nice diffused corns, you can see some of the sort of spot kind of patterns start coming in. And when you're looking at motleys and you know it's a motley, if you're wondering if it's a diffused, um, diffused motleys are not going to have any of that side pattern. A regular motley will have kind of a, a long stripe that sort of goes down the body or at least some sort of other thing in the pattern going on on the sides, whereas a diffused motley will not. Uh, there might be a little tiny bit of a stripe up in the, the first, like, 
one fifth to one quarter of the body on the sides, but um, it will not continue like a normal Motley's uh, side pattern would. I'll bring up just a couple of interesting ones here since we're here, and that is the scaleless Motley. I think scaleless is very interesting because uh, just in general, it's interesting, but when you add Motley into it, um, you can tell kind of that it's a Motley, but also I would I would say it would be iffy for me at the same time because uh, a lot of the very de defined pattern that we see on a corn snake uh, is defined because the scales define it so well. Uh, so when you take those scales away, it's hard to know if the pattern that you're seeing is a motley pattern or if it's just a weird, wonky, normal pattern that wouldn't otherwise look that way if it had scales. So that's just kind of an interesting thing to look for. Um, scaleless will have some belly checkers, though, whereas scaleless motley may not. Um, I don't really work with scaleless, so I can't tell you too much about what to look for and what not to look for. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of those photos and uh, hearing a little bit about my opinion on them. Um, let me know which one your favorite is in the comments. I'd really like to know, uh, do you like Motley? Do you not? Do you prefer other types of pattern mutations? Uh, and if you do really like Motley, what is your favorite kind of Motley? I think that mine has to be Pinstripe, but uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this weird like Okatee-ish looking Motley line brings uh, sometime in the future. I actually plan to breed her into my Okatee Halo line, so looking forward to seeing how that goes because uh, there's some really thick bordered Okatees in that line. Next week I'm going to be doing a book review on this book by Don Soderbergh. This is one of the most popular corn snake books out there. A uh, pretty good book, spoiler alert. If you're interested in getting this copy of this book, remember to subscribe and make sure that you have notifications turned on so that you don't miss this video going up next week. Anybody who comments on a book review video has a chance of winning that book. And also we will be giving away last month's book, which was this one. Also an amazing book. Uh, go back to that video and comment on that if you would like to win this book. This book is honestly really awesome for beginners. Like I would say it's probably one of the best beginner books out there, especially with its small size. Super easy to read. I honestly could just rant and rave about it forever. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in that video.